So when they ask you a question, you respond with the only things you know to respond with. If you want to be able to change your behavior and you feel stuck in that circle, your first job is to go out into the rest of the circle and find out what else there is. You got to go out there. You got to look. Welcome to the Ignited Recovery Podcast, a new way forward for anyone looking for answers but feeling left out. If you've been searching for empowerment, triumph, and purpose, you've found them right here. You won't hear the same solutions and you're not going to have any excuses to fall back on because Ignited Recovery allows heroes to rise and become their best selves. I'm Dr. Adi Jaffe and I can't wait to be your guide on this journey. Are you ready to become an Ignited Hero? I was talking about kind of like the four big problems you may have when you try to create behavior change. We start with the first one. Let's say around drinking, you know, these are the choices I've seen people make. The people I know either don't drink at all or they drink alcoholically, right? Let's say somebody grew up in a, in a house where people were either sober or drinking really, really heavily. They haven't seen an intermediate step. They haven't seen anybody who drinks in a non-problematic way consistently. So that seems like an impossible situation. Does that make sense? It seems like something that doesn't exist. If you want to see if that is a path, your job would then be to go seek other people who seem to have achieved that goal. You have to go look for them. Because I have this drawing in my, uh, in my book I'm going to try to create a quick version of it here for us, just so you can see it. Let's imagine that this circle right here represent all the choices of what you can do in any given situation, right? All the behaviors that you can take on. So a friend asks you if you want to go drinking at the bar, and this represents all the potential options you have, anything that exists. Right now, if somebody called you and asked you if you want to go drink at a bar, you wouldn't even be able to pick from that entire circle. You would pick from a much smaller circle right here that actually represents all the choices you know you can respond with because that's all you know. So when they ask you a question, you respond with the only things you know to respond with. If you want to be able to change your behavior and you feel stuck in that circle, your first job is to go out into the rest of the circle and find out what else there is. You got to go out there. You got to look. Some of those choices may look really, really bad for you, right? That's that circle with an X. You may be like, nope, don't want that. Some of them might be really small and tiny, but something that you want to look towards. And some of them may be really, really large and offer a lot of different options. If you don't know what other options you have, your first job, something you control fully, is to go look for other options. You can do that here in group. You can talk to one of the coaches. You can talk to your friends. You can go read books. You can listen to podcasts. Do whatever you want. Here's my proof. Has there ever, ever been at least one occasion in which you were reading a book or listening to a podcast and somebody said something you weren't expecting, but it was an activity, an action, a concept you had never heard before, never considered before, that they told you solved the problem you have? Did you have a moment where you went, holy ish that's a thing i can do that i didn't even know that was possible i didn't know that was on the menu that's exactly what i'm talking about that is exactly what i'm talking about your universe of potential responses just expanded it has to do with everything on the face of the planet this is not just around addiction or relationships at all it can have to do with anything you know people who were depressed and didn't realize seasonal affective disorder was a thing and that they could buy lights that stimulate things similar to the sun. And if you just buy one of those lights and give yourself 10 to 15 minutes of exposure to that, your depression will lift. How mind-blowing is that concept? You thought you had something wrong with you that caused you to be depressed. And in reality, you found out you're missing sun exposure related to like vitamin D and the occipital cortex, the visual cortex that, um, that responds to light is asking for light because we're humans and we need light and we're um, lacking. That is what I'm talking about. And I'm telling you right now, there's no problem you're struggling with 
that somebody hasn't solved somewhere. Doesn't exist. There is no problem you have right now that has not been solved by somebody somewhere at some point in time. So with that understanding, with that thinking, if you don't know what to do, literally, you don't know what to do. We'll talk about other options here in a second. But if you don't know what to do, your job is to go and look for things to do. Make that your purpose for as long as you need to until you have another list of options. Once you have that list of options, the first problem is not your problem anymore. You may not have grown up in scenarios that supported behaving the way you're going to start behaving, but you now know there are other options. Now comes the next piece. Which of those feel to you like they're most relevant, most easily applicable to you, most easily um, executable by you? Things you can actually get done without completely upending and changing your whole life. If there is no answer to that, you got to go to the next level and say, maybe you do need to upend and, and change everything in your life, right? But let's start with the simple one. Which of the things you just learned support where you want to go and you can start doing them right now? If you have that, now you're past the second level, right? You are aware that there are things you can do and you've selected the subset that you believe you're capable of. Now comes the hard part. You've got to start taking action. For most of these things, there's going to be a block. There's going to be a hurdle. There's going to be a learning curve. They're not going to work as well for you right off the bat. Or they're going to require you to do something in the interim. Even that light example I gave, you're going to have to go online and search for these lights. And you're going to have to order them. And they're going to have to come to your house. Just because you learn that infrared or you know sunlight exposure during winter, dark months helps lift depression. Knowing that, understanding that concept has not changed your seasonal affective disorder. You're going to have to go do something about it. So the third step for us is you're going to have to take action. You're going to have to start. A lot of people get stuck on this, everybody. We get stuck. Why do we get stuck? We get stuck because doing that thing is something we're just not used to doing. Whatever it is, we're not used to doing it. And our brain will push us towards doing the things we do know how to do over and over and over. This might sound absurd as I say it right now. You can learn that there's a solution. Understand that the path between you and that solution is not monumental. You can get it done in the next day, two days, three days. You can get it started. And then it's 7 p.m. And there's a bottle of vodka in your kitchen. And you're like, fuck it. I'll do it tomorrow. I just need a drink right now. It is. This is not a joke. It's not a drill. This is hard. Getting started, I would argue, is the hardest part. Looking for solutions is hard enough by itself but it doesn't require a ton of action. Doing something, the next hardest part. So now you have to overcome that. You order the light, you get the book, you jump on the group, you schedule the session, you try the hypnosis, whatever the thing is, you go and you do it. Now we're up to number four. You've jumped on the bar, you're trying to pull up. For the vast majority of people, if you get any of the benefit, you'll get a small amount of the benefit the first time you try this thing. You won't get the whole thing. If that benefit is big enough the first time, you may feel really, really good about it and keep trying. If it's not, you may now make the decision, oh, this was worthless. I shouldn't have even done this. It doesn't work. And then there's unfortunately a cascading effect because now you've gone through all this hard work to try something, which was so much effort and it didn't work. And now you give up not only on that option, but on the idea of looking for the next one. The message in your head, the wrong message in your head is you see, I tried and it didn't work. And then we point the finger at ourselves. There must be something wrong with me. There's only two options. Either that thing really is not a good fit for you and something else will be, or you just don't know how to do it well enough. You haven't used it the right way. You haven't executed it well. And if you keep trying and practicing and doing it for a longer period of time, you will learn how to do it well. You will be better practice. The thing will work better and you will get the benefit. That's it. Those are the only two options. And if you've gone that far, it can be really, really, really difficult to show up to this thing every day. Because really, nobody, not you and nobody outside, is seeing the change and you have to somehow believe and trust yourself enough to keep going with a thing that hasn't proven itself at all yet. And you have to keep showing up to it and keep showing up. And then the question comes in, as we've talked about many, many times before, what do you do in that world? What do you do in that context in order to check in with yourself, right? Am I going on the right path or do I need to go back to the starting point and find somebody new and something new? This concept of response selection is a huge, huge undervalued part of what it takes 
to overcome behavioral habits that are hurting you. I'm going to use an example and you'll, you'll understand how much you believe in this based on the example I'm going to use right now. This is how AA works, guys. You don't want to do it. You know, most people initially don't even know that it exists. Then you find out there's this thing. You go, and for many, many people, the first time doesn't feel good at all. And then they have to somehow keep coming. Now, I'm not telling you you should keep going to AA. I'm just saying, here's, here's the rub. The people who keep going and buy into everything and follow it up over time change their behavior. Because they replace, all they really did is response selection. They replace their behavior for a certain amount of time. When they wanted to drink, they would go to a meeting. When they wanted to drink, they will call a sponsor. The same thing, same exact thing can work here, right? You want to drink, you jump on a program. You, you want to drink, you jump on a group. You call your, your, uh, your coach. You call one of the other people from the program. The same exact idea works. And it could be something completely different. You want to drink, you go for a jog. You go to a yoga class. You do some push-ups. You eat some gum. I mean, the options are endless, but what I want to drive home is that there will be a learning curve. There will be incremental change. And I promise it. This is not a maybe. I promise there will be moments where you're not sure if you're heading in the right direction and you'll feel disenchanted. You'll feel unmotivated. You'll feel lost. I prom That's going to happen. Thank you for tuning in to the Ignited Heroes Recovery Podcast. I really hope you found the information here useful and that we'll see you back here next week. And look, I want to make sure that this podcast is the most useful it can be for you. So please let me know by emailing info at ignited.com if there are any specific topics or questions you'd like to have addressed. As usual, if you like this episode, I would love for you to leave us a five-star review and rating. Thanks and see you next week.